Ah, okay, 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 okay. With the beep, beep, beat of the tom toms, when the jungle shadows fall, like the tick, tick, tick of the stately clock as it stands against the wall, like the drip, drip, drip of the raindrops, when the summer shower is through. There's a voice in me keeps repeating, it's you. My name is Miss Jacqueline Jones. When I was born, my mom said she told the doctor not to hit me because he might break me doing the melody. So as far as I know, I was born singing and trying to dance. Being a product of two generations of gospel singers, Miss Jacqueline Jones always knew she was destined to be a singer. I found myself with my mother intact doing my first official show at four years old. Dressed to the max at my church and I sang, Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. <laughs> she was born in Gary, Indiana, to a large family of 13 brothers and sisters. All of her family enjoyed music, but only Jackie followed through with her passion for singing. My grandmother, who pretty much raised us, um, brought my sisters and I together, and we uh, became um, the Gospel Supremes. And we loved it, but I'm the only one um, that it was truly in my blood. Always have loved it. With her mother's knowledge of the hardships an artist goes through, she insisted Jackie get an academic degree first. That was when it was decided that if I was going to still go into the performing arts, that I bring them a degree in anything else I could do anywhere at any time and take care of what I needed, like my rent, eating, you know, staying out of trouble. So that's why I have a degree in as an LPN. When Jackie was ready to seriously look at a career in singing, she knew she'd have to find someone to guide her. And the gentleman that I met to do this for me was Mr. Raymond Green. He was a wonderful person that had a very lucrative business cleaning up performers' acts. So the first thing I went was to clean up the voice. I sang maybe 16 bars. He said, uh-uh, do not sing. He said, you already have the sound that most performers would do anything for. And that is a very recognizable sound. He said, what you need is to learn what to do when you're on stage. So for six weeks, Raymond Green trained me how to be a performer. I thank the stars, my, thank God for him all the time. She got her big start in the very birthplace of jazz, New Orleans, Louisiana singing with renowned jazz groups like the Dukes of Dixieland, as well as Luther Kent and Trick Bag. Oh my goodness, my history of the Dukes of Dixieland. That is a wonderful time in my life. I spent eight months in New Orleans, um, and I was so excited to get the contract. Working with the Dukes was quite interesting because I now had to dress in the period, uh, including my hair, um, and definitely how I acted to be real cutesy, you know. So I couldn't be a true jazzer on it and do my own riffs or uh, my version of it. I had to be very careful about uh, staying true to the times, you know. I was with them for um, almost eight months. The last two, uh, the hotel uh, shut down for renovations or whatever. But anyway, that's when I uh, got introduced to Luther Kent and Trick Bag. They're a fantastic group, and they were a band that played everything. You know, funk, uh, classic R&B, classic blues. Uh, they even broke into some jazz every now and then, you know. They just played everything. But despite her connections to famous performers, she still faced challenges during her career. The most difficult part was just trying to break in. You know, for me, this one time it was this, this club manager, I believe it was, 
I mean, he was just raving about everything we did that evening uh, and had us to stay on and do the entire night, okay? Did not want to pay us. Did not want to pay us. I think that's one of the few times I've been taken out of the club trying to get a punch and kicking. <laughs> but one of the bad members, I'm glad he was strong enough to pick me up and take me out. Along with tensions in her professional life, there were a number of difficulties that Jackie faced in her personal life. Alan Charles Williamson was the name of my son. He always wanted to be a special type of person that I could not identify with. After this, the last time that he was in trouble, he really, really decided he was going to do, do good and make it. And I loved that. We were on a good relationship, and it was getting better and better and better when he was killed. That's why uh, I was very angry about his death. Alan was a fantastic artist. I even have some of his uh, beautiful um, letters that he sent to me. Um, when you're in, they make you use the uh, long standard stationary envelope envelopes. Well, he would draw beautiful things on it and send them to me. So um, I have them, some of them framed because it was wonderful work. All in all, what I remember about him is good. She didn't have to go through all her struggles alone. Her husband, Brent, was her pillar of strength and always there for her. Brent was a fantastic man. This was my third husband. Not my first or second, my third husband. And I often would tell him the other two were just training for him. Yes, this is Brent. He's the guy right there. <laughs> and thinking about him, even though uh, he has uh, passed away. It makes me smile. My favorite song I did for him was uh, My Funny Valentine. He always loved when I sang that. He courted me for 10 years before I said yes. And we had so much fun together. We could walk in the park and just hold hands and talk about cabbages and kings, you know. He had um, uh, cancer, and we struggled for uh, five years. Uh, two years were very good. They brought it back under control. Um, but the last uh, year and a half, he really had a hard fight, hard fight. And I am very thankful that the last words he spoke, he spoke to me, and the words were, I love you, you know. He was always supportive, very supportive of me, you know. And that's another thing I loved him for. In 1999, Jackie fought through health issues that threatened to end her career. Um, I had a brain aneurysm and a stroke at the same time. That was in 99. And my career was really blossoming. I uh, had some big things on the table. Uh, that I was going to do, I would stop dead in my tracks. Um, I first got the pain. I told him about it. We called the doctor. The doctor told me what to do. Brent uh, helped me back into the dressing room. I went in to, uh, to chew something, and the stroke hit right on top of the aneurysm. I went out, my head struck the vanity. That's the last thing I remember. Despite her health issues, Jackie still finds time to donate to charities and spend time with family. But um, I believe that's God's doing, you know, because since then I've got more involved with the community uh, organizations because I've had more time, because I have to take downtime between shows. Her health may have forced her to take a step back in her professional life, but Jackie still has a commanding presence on stage and in the rehearsals with her band.
have been working off and on with Miss Jones for, I would say about almost a good 15 years, 15, 20 years, yeah. I enjoy we're working with her, and the more that I do, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning more about her as a singer and a person, and that just makes makes it better because then then the music is is better. Working with her is fun. It's um, inspiring. It's um, it's joyous. It's challenging, but it's a good challenge for me. It's been um, encouraging and boosting for me personally as a musician that she thinks enough of my ability to accompany her. I like honest musicians, and like when I say, say that. I'm, I'm, like, I'm not saying that they're, they're like somebody is a liar or a dishonest person, but when you do what you do and you do it honestly, that's the music that I like. And Jackie sings honestly. It's like she's not trying to like be a blues or a jazz singer. It's just, that's what she, she that's what she does because that's what she is. She's a beautiful person, first, first, first place. Second place, she's a consummate professional. And third is, she's a master of her craft. Awesome entertainer, awesome singer. Five stars, all the way. So she's like my aunt, you know, she's like my aunt in music. So I just love her very much. And it's just an honor to work with her. And she's a gem of Florida and I hope someday the, the world gets to hear more of her and and hopefully maybe we'll get to record her and get her out there and stuff but she is definitely a gem and so precious to us all here in, in Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jacqueline Jones!